Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning, the scripture text is taken from the Gospel of Luke, and I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verse 26, and this is what it says. During Elizabeth's sixth month of pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph from the family of David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, the Lord has blessed you and is with you. But Mary was very startled by what the angel said and wondered what this greeting might mean. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has shown you His grace. Listen, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of King David, his ancestor. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever and his kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, How will this happen since I am a virgin? The angel said to Mary, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will cover you. For this reason the baby will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Now Elizabeth, your relative, is also pregnant with a son, though she is very old. Everyone thought she could not have a baby, but she has been pregnant for six months. God can do anything. Mary said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me as you say. Then the angel went away. Pray with me. Lord, may we hear that word this morning, that you can do anything. You can do anything. And Lord, don't just do it through someone else. Do it through us, through the power of your Spirit. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Christmas season's here. And what is it that prepares you for Christmas? I like the songs. I like the songs a lot. And one of the things that I think I might miss most during this, this, uh, this pandemic is we don't have near as much singing as, as I've become accustomed to through in the years. And I, and I hope that, that uh, you practice that singing at home, if, especially if that's what prepares you. I like singing with other folks. Somebody will cover up my voice a little bit. And singing with, with, in church, it's a, it's a wonderful time, especially these songs of Christmas. They help prepare me. But it's not just the songs. It's the stories. This is the time of year where we remember those, those stories that stick to the memories of, uh, and, and the folds of our brain and, and our imaginations run wild with them. And there's, there's stories that are wonderful stories. You ask any child how many wise men were there, and they'll tell you three wise men. Well, that's imagination that's taken part of the story right there because the Bible doesn't say anything about three wise men does say something about three gifts, and so our imaginations fill in some of the, the, the blanks in there, and we think because, well, there are three wise men, there must have been three gifts, and, 
And that's a part of a good story, is that our imaginations take part in it. And it sticks to the walls of our memory. You ask any child, well, what did the innkeeper say? And a child will tell you, no room in the inn. Well, that's imagination talking right there because <laughs> there's not an innkeeper in, in, in the story. It says there was no room for them in the inn, so our imaginations kind of take over right there and say, well, there must have been somebody sitting at the desk saying, well, you should have made a reservation to the barn. No, it's not in there. It just says there was no room for them in the inn. But that's the way it is with these sticky stories. We, we start to fill in the, 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 the places to make a better story. And it captivates our imagination. This morning, I read one of those stories. So often, our imaginations run away with this one. We tend to think the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, Will you be a part of God's great plan? Well, that's not in there. Gabriel doesn't ask any questions at all. He makes a lot of statements. He makes statements like, you will become pregnant. He makes statements like, you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called Son of the Most High. He makes statements like, he will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Gabriel doesn't have any questions for Mary. And I think this is the reason that our imaginations jump in there is because that's not entirely comfortable for us. We've, I don't know about you, but I, I'd like to think that I'm in control of my own life, and I think that's the way we all are. You know, the, but there's something about the year 2020 that's letting us all know, well, maybe we aren't quite in control as much in control as we'd like to think. That there's this life that we planned, and, and Mary certainly had that life. It tells us that she was engaged to Joseph. He was a carpenter. Certainly they had a life that they had, had planned, but then there's this life over here, this life that Mary didn't plan. And when the life that we planned comes crashing together with the, the life that we did plan, what do we do? What do we do? Well, I think that's where Mary has something to say to, to you and me today. Because I never did put the pandemic on my calendar. I, I never did plan on this pandemic. And every day, it, it feels a lot like a new day. I remember when I first found out about the pandemic, I thought, well, certainly it'll be over by Easter. You know, we have to have everybody together by Easter. And then certainly at Easter, I thought, well, you know, it's going to be over by summer. I didn't plan this pandemic. There was a life I'd planned that came crashing together with a life that I didn't. So what do we do? Well, that's what I want to talk about this morning. Because I think Mary has something to teach us. And before I, I jump off right there, I do want to say one thing. I don't want anyone to get confused. I am not saying God brought this pandemic. I do not believe God brought the pandemic. And I'll tell you the reason I don't believe God brought the pandemic. I don't believe God brought the pandemic because I believe what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 says, Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of God's nature. That when we want to know about the nature of God, we look to Jesus, not to our imaginations, not to, to a good imagination that fills in the blanks, not to a story that we'd like to, to, to pull up and weave in to prove what... No, I believe what the Bible says, that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of God's nature. We know the nature of God by looking at Jesus Christ. And what we find in the nature of Jesus Christ isn't one who gave someone a disease ever. As a matter of fact, just the opposite. He healed everywhere he went. We find the nature of God as one who, who redeems, who brings the salve of salvation. 
that it's, it's why Jesus came, to redeem, to make whole, to heal, to heal us in the broken places. I believe what the Bible says, that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his nature. He never said, you know, you might learn a little bit if you had a limp, so I'm going to make you walk with a limp. Nope. He healed. He healed. He healed then, and he, he heals today. I don't believe that, that, that God brought the pandemic, but I do believe that there's the nature of the fallen world, the reality that we live in is a reality that has disease. The arena that we live in has death. The arena that we live in has disappointment, that, that, that it's a reality. That's the reality of a, of a fallen world, not the nature of a loving God. That we do have a, a life that we planned, and yes, there's a life that we didn't. And, and those lives, they come crashing together. So what do we do? Well, that's where I believe Mary can teach us. And the first thing I think that, that Mary can teach us is what she says in verse 38. She says, let this happen to me as you say. The, the first thing I want to talk about is Mary chose to give trust. Mary chose to give trust to God. Back in 1981, there was a virtuoso violinist named Peter Cropper. Peter Cropper was um, one of the greatest violinists alive in 1981. And he had a little quartet that, that went around the world touring, giving the greatest music that the world had known to audiences everywhere. Well, the Royal Academy of Music had given on loan a Stradivarius violin to Peter Cropper to use. That They wanted people all over the world to hear the greatest music played on the greatest instrument. Well, he was in a festival in Cuerpio, Finland, and he was walking across the stage at this festival, tripped over a power cord and fell on the priceless Stradivarius violin. Well, not only did he crush the body, he broke off the neck when he fell on it. He gave it back to the Royal Academy of Music, and they knew that the violin was destroyed. But Peter, Peter Cropper, he kept insisting, I know a master craftsman, and let's at least give him a, give him a chance to rebuild this violin, to restore this violin. Well, the Royal Academy of Music didn't want to do that. But finally they relented and, and they gave the, the Stradivarius violin to this, this great craftsman. He spent months working on this priceless instrument. And when he returned it to the Royal Academy, the naked eye couldn't see that it had ever been broken. They, the naked eye certainly couldn't see that the neck had been broken off and the body crushed. But what one sees isn't the test of a, of a great violin. It's the way it plays. It's the way it sounds. They gave it to Peter Cropper, who had been playing this violin more than anyone else had played this violin. And he declared that it wasn't just as good as it was before. It was better than it ever had been. Jesus Christ is the master craftsman who came for you and for me, not just to make our lives the, the way we always imagined them, but to put our lives back together. Redemption, redemption, that is the one great doctrine of the Christian faith, that we hold on to one great fact, the resurrection, and we hold on to one great doctrine, and that doctrine is redemption, that what Jesus did on the cross, He did what no plan of ours could ever do. He took your brokenness and mine. He took your sin and mine. He took disease. He took death. He took despair. He took sorrow. And he nailed it to the cross to take it away its power once and for all. And when he rose from the grave, 
the power of His Holy Spirit. It lives through you and through me to provide that salve and salvation, to make us whole, to make us His. There's no good news without the cross and the resurrection. So we give Him trust. Trust. We trust Him. Trust Him to do His great work in and through us. Mary trusted God. Mary trusted God, and, and, and you and I can trust Him too. The second thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is her name was Mary, and she chose to, to give help, to give service. The very next verse, after verse 39, is, is, is verse 39. It says that Mary got up and went quickly to a town in the hills of Judea. She got up and went quickly to the town of Elizabeth. It says that Elizabeth was her relative. Well, we don't know what the relationship was. She might have been a cousin. She may have been an aunt. We know that she was older than Mary was, but we know that, that the angel Gabriel went to Elizabeth as well. And when Mary entered in to help Elizabeth, it was Elizabeth who said, Why has this good thing happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? It was gracious help in service in service to Elizabeth. Then Mary reached out first. Years ago, Guidepost Magazine had a story, a true story about a, a man who was hiking in the mountains. Snowstorm blew in, and he was caught off guard by it. He wasn't dressed for it, and he knew he needed to seek shelter fast. As he was seeking shelter, his hands and his feet grew numb. And he knew that he didn't have long to live if, if he couldn't walk. He knew that he didn't have long to live if he, if, if he couldn't make his way through the snowstorm. He tripped over something, and when he looked back, he discovered that it, it was another hiker who had fallen in the snow and couldn't get up because his arms and his, his legs were too numb to walk. Well, the hiker had a choice to make. Was he going to save himself and, and go and find shelter, or was he going to turn back and help this, this hiker that he had, he had tripped over? Well, he chose to, to do what he could to save the man, and he began to, to he took off his wet gloves and began to, to rub the man's arms and legs, his feet, and to massage them to bring the, the circulation back. And a strange thing happened that it was while he was rubbing the man's arms and legs and hands and feet to bring the circulation back that he began to get circulation back to his own arms and legs and hands and feet. And the two of them, the two of them got up and they found shelter together. Later a doctor, doctor told the man that, that it was helping the man in the snow that saved his own life. And that's the way that, that you and I are made. You and I are made not for ourselves, to serve ourselves, to seek shelter for ourselves, but you and I were made for service, to help for others. Second Corinthians 4, 5 says, We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as as servants for Jesus' sake. This pandemic has been that life that we didn't plan, that's come crashing together with that life that we did. And as soon as that happened, the, the first thing that human nature calls us to is survival, and we grow inward. Human nature calls us to to isolate ourselves. And it's the isolation. It's the isolation that will certainly break our, our spirits, break our souls, that, that we were made to reach out. And, and it might be a, a call, a letter, to let someone know that they matter to God and that they matter to us as well. 
to break the isolation. We need one another. And here in this pandemic, I want to invite you, invite you beyond yourself to reach out, to reach out, to give help, to give service. That's what Mary did, and I believe that's what what you and I are called to do as well. That's the first thing that Mary did after she gave trust to God, was she reached out to others. Her name was Mary, and she chose to give help, to reach out in service to others. She chose to give trust. And the third thing that I want to talk about this morning is she chose to give praise. Verse 46, it's the beginning of the song of Mary. And breaking out in song, Mary said, My soul praises the Lord. My heart rejoices in God, my Savior. She chose to give praise. A little while back, mother sent in a story to the Clean Laugh website. It was a story about her children who had gotten Cinderella video at the beginning of the summer. And all summer long, they began to to play that video, listening to sing along with the songs. Well, it was a hot summer, so they had raised the windows. She didn't think that her children's video or of Cinderella and their singing to it could be heard by the neighbors. But she discovered after they'd been watching the video for about a week that she was out in the yard and she heard... The workers next door who were working on a neighbor's roof, one big gruff fellow who was lifting up roofing shingles as he was climbing a ladder, began singing, put it together and what do you get? And then two workers on the roof sang back to him, bibbidi-bobbidi, bibbidi-bobbidi, bibbidi-bobbidi-boo. Well, singing is contagious. Praise is contagious. And it's the the singing of of praise to God that is a part of the season. It marks a key part of the season that don't let it get past you without taking part and letting it become a part of who you are. E. Stanley Jones said the, the early Christians did not look at the world and say, look what this world's coming to that the early Christians looked to Jesus and said, look what's coming to the world. That you and I, you and I have reason to praise. You and I have reason to give hope because Jesus has come into the world. And that's what we sing about. That's who we give praise to. We don't focus on the life that we didn't plan We give praise to God for the life that we have. This morning, it may be that that this pandemic has crashed into the life that you have. My invitation this morning is that, that you learn from Mary and that you choose choose to give trust, that, that, you, that you learn to ma- from Mary and you choose to give help, that you learn from Mary and you choose to give praise. Praise to God for the life that you do have. Pray with me. Jesus, this life, this life, it's a life that you've chosen to, to live through us. With the power of your Holy Spirit, you give us more than we could imagine. A life that that has redemption, that has the quality of eternity. An abundant life, a life that's whole. Lord, live your life. Breathe your Spirit through us that we may begin to experience that not one day, but this day. And that we might respond in praise, in praise to you. Because that's that's the contagious, contagious word that this world needs. 
It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.